Hey guys, this is Ruckus Gaming coming at you with the next installment in the How To Minimalist series. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than last time. Last time we went silent, we went kind of crazy, very high roll with the grand finale and the empty cage and the astrolabe transforms. Today, I want to show you something that's a little bit more repeatable. So we're going to play Ironclad. And we're going to go for a non-infinite minimalist. And we're only going to be using common and uncommon cards. So you're not going to have to rely on getting really good transforms or really good rares. Of course, full disclosure, this is a seeded run. I scouted out some seeds to see if I could find a good one. This was actually the second seed I played. And it went really well. So... I think this will be a very good demonstration of exactly what I want to show you guys. So this is also going to be on no ascension. So just so you know, you don't always need those elites and the relics they give you sometimes, especially early in act one. If you get like a forced elite, it can end these minimalist runs because you've just got your basic starting deck. So let's get started. What we are going to take advantage of right away is this remove two for lose all gold. That's 99 gold to remove two cards. Usually that would be 75 plus 100, 175. You're saving 76 gold here, which is essentially one remove later down the line. Uh, usually I would say that the merchant nodes are going to be very, very high value. But because we already lost all of our gold, that's not going to be very important this first act. What we are really looking for are events. And we can see right away that the left side has quite a bit more events than the right. So this is where we're going to start off. As I have said previously in these very challenge run oriented videos, I like to reserve maybe one energy per turn for blocking. With your starter deck, you don't have a lot of ways to spend your energy. You may as well just end the fight as quickly as possible. Another remove there. That's going to be the number one priority, really. Removes are the hardest part of getting a minimalist deck a lot of people think it's the cards it's not it's the removes shuriken is going to be amazing strength scaling we're going to be playing lots of one cost attacks we're going to transform this strike here into a cleave which is amazing gives us aoe damage it's going to simplify a lot of fights down the road one energy worth of block here save a little hp i love doing this on ironclad because of burning blood that gives you a lot of leeway to play a little more aggressively you aren't as afraid to be block deficient because you can just get that back rage is going to be our main block solution now that we're getting rid of all of our defend cards <laughs> sorry for the sniffle i'm still a little under the weather we're skipping that merchant because we don't have any money. Next, we are upgrading Bash for more stacks of Vulnerable. The longer that stays up, the more damage we're going to do. And we're going to keep going. Ink Bottle gives us a little bit of draw, which is nice. And you can see where this is headed. Play Rage. Do as many attacks as we can if we need to block. Otherwise, we're looking to get Bash in play so we can use the Vulnerable and end fights quickly. Don't want any of this. Alright, so we're going to Bash one of these guys in the back. I should have raged first. A little bit of order mistake there, but we will be okay. We've got Burning Blood... We're not going to stress out about it. Kill you and kill you and we're good. Don't want any of this. One block. 
and then attack just to save a little damage. Rage, bash, strike. Generally speaking, if you have a situation like that where you're like, ooh, I could play a second defend to full block, or I could play another strike, I think it's better to play the strike. I think it's better to just get it and end the combat as quickly as possible. All right, here. This Juggernaut potion is gonna help a lot with this rage. So, Lagavulin, I think is probably one of the better elites if you're thinking about, you know, doing a minimalist run or doing a speed climber run, maybe doing the one relic achievement. I think Lagavulin is probably what you're hoping to see as your Act 1 Ewe if you do take one. You may not necessarily need to take one. White Beast statue is going to provide a lot of value for us, letting us use these potions as much as we'd like, essentially. Here, I'm going to upgrade this cleave. I've got lots of healing, so I'm not scared. I don't feel like I need to rest. Again, this is a zero, so it's very, very forgiving. We don't need the rage this turn because there's no attack incoming. This boss, Slime Boss, is going to be a bit of a challenge because of these added slimes. So, we've got a very small deck already. I think we're just going to split him here. Every time they add those slimes, it's going to thin out our deck even more. Make them really, really cumbersome to play around. So... This is a slightly dangerous boss, but I think we can outlast, especially with these potions. I think we're going to have to use one here just for a little safety. We will split you. We'll get a pretty good split, and then I'll get rid of this slime. It's not worth three block. I'd much rather get that status card out of there. Ooh, yuck. I think this is going to be a block potion. And then get rid of some slimes. Boy, this guy. Alright, get those slimes out of there. Hopefully get some good draw here. Kill you. You're not quite split, but... We're going to survive the turn, split you soon. All right, let's get rid of these slimes. 26 is not a great split, to be honest, but we will make do, hopefully. This is a tough one. We're down to it. I might need to use this second potion. Somehow this fight is slightly different from my other fights. All right, we're okay here. We live with, no, we do not. So we need to use this potion here. All right. Somehow I played that fight slightly differently than before. We don't want any of those cards. Here we're gonna take Coffee Dripper. You might think it's a little risky, but now that we've got this very small deck, we're going to go over here to this remove very quickly. And then we're hopefully going to get a second remove up here. Let me just double check my notes. Yes, we're going for two shops. So this looks like the line to do. <laughs> All right, strike, bash. Let's get another strike in there. Very nice. Mostly blocking. See, that's 12. That's lethal. And I can get another bash on you. 
All right. Yeah, I'll get the bash. I think that's more important. That'll scale us up with shuriken. Make sure we kill you before you run away. Don't get my money. We're mostly set on cards. There is one or two. Nice remove here. Saves us gold. This will always be 75. So it is never going to get more expensive no matter how many shops you visit. Here, we're getting another remove. And we're almost there. We just need one more remove and we've got our minimalist deck complete. And let's just do one more for fun. Once we get it down to five, we will be guaranteed to be drawing our full hand or our full deck every turn. So that will be very nice. That means we'll always get the rage. We'll always be getting at least 15 block. Now there are times when 15 block is not going to be enough. Obviously there are enemies that can attack for more than 15, but they're not gonna be doing it very often and it's not gonna be every fight. And the fact is we still have burning blood. So if we have one bad fight, that really is okay. It won't bother us because then we'll have a couple easy fights in a row and we'll be able to take very little damage if any, and we'll use burning blood to heal back up and replace that lost HP. We've also got this white beast statue. So we've got plenty of potions to support us in any event if we get into a sticky situation. So these are the things to keep an eye out for. You have to worry a lot more about things other than your cards, which I think a lot of people don't always consider. All right, we're gonna go here. We don't really need to upgrade these strikes. We could be getting some events, but there are also events that you want to be careful of and you don't necessarily want to see. I'm especially thinking of the Act 3 Falling event, which causes you to lose one attack, skill, or power from your deck, which often can completely dismantle these very small minimalist decks. If you have something like Rage that is completely necessary to do any kind of blocking and you get that falling event, uh, you're not going to have a good time. Let's just say that. Alright, continuing. As you see, once you get into this set rhythm, you're going to have a lot of combats that look the exact same. You don't necessarily really care what the enemy is doing. I could play a little bit faster if I didn't need to use that rage on a block turn. And that makes it very easy to do something like the speed climber achievement. I've seen a lot of people posting that they got two achievements at the same time. They got minimalist and speed climber because as you see, there's no real thinking involved a lot of the time, especially in combat. We're going to take 180 gold just for a little bonus. We don't necessarily need it for removes, but what it will give us, say goodbye to one strike. Now we're at five. Toy Ornithopter is amazing with White Beast statue. That's going to be a lot of healing that we have in our back pocket. No rest, unfortunately. Upgrade the last strike. Let's finish out these last two combats. They shouldn't be too dangerous at this point. Sorry, trying to sniff away from the mic. Been getting over this cold for quite a while now. All right, rage, bash, cleave, you're dead. All right. Block Potion. I think I could... I don't need it. I don't need it. This is all good. We can weaken him. We can recover HP with our heal. 
Cards are good. We don't need to check that. That's another way to speed up. Is you just don't play cards you don't need to. And you don't go to reward screens if you don't need to. We're not going to need any cards in this deck. So we don't need to look at what there is. This deck is finished. Now we just have to get through the last act and a half or so. Alright. Another way... Uh, bad habit. Another way to very quickly uh, increase the speed of your play is to keep your left hand on the number keys. You see I'm just hitting the number and playing the cards. I'm not dragging them with my mouse. It's not a very long action, but it is an extra unnecessary action. So it will slow you down. Uh, I should have used this one well, out of homie for a little bit. All right. Continue to play just the very basic rotation. Early on, he's not even attacking very much. So we can just chip away. We're getting very close to that halfway point. We're probably going to be using this weak potion for that big attack he does after this buff. So, bash, cleave, strike. Here's the buff. Big attack. Let's weaken you. Just to make it a little bit easier. Do a little bit more blocking. But this is a zero. We're going to heal to full after this anyway. So, not like it's completely necessary. I think at this point we are in good enough shape. We're doing enough blocking on most turns that even if we had taken that full 26 or whatever it was, I think we would have survived anyway. All right. Skipping the cards. Here, normally I would say that Empty Cage is exactly what you're looking for, but we have already been quite fortunate with the removals we have gotten from our Niao bonus as well as very early events. What we do like is a little bit more energy. We've got one more attack card that we can't usually play. We've got that one strike that's left over, and this will let us play that strike. Time Eater is probably the hardest boss to do this on just because of the card counting mechanics. It's going to make it a little bit awkward. So we're going to go here. I think we're mostly going to be interested in events. We just want to finish as quickly as possible with as little trouble as possible. Especially if you're doing something like a speed climber. The thing that will take up the most time on any given run will be your combats. They just take longer. Events, you know, it's one screen, click, click, you're in, you're out, it's done. So. When your deck is finished and you are just trying to reach the end on time, you're not worried about looking for any more pieces or putting it together, then you can just say, hey, let's go to every event that we can. Flex, I do actually want to take here. I know I took this energy and I want to play that strike, but flex is strength. I've got money, and I can remove one of these strikes. I will have extra energy, but I can play that when my ink bottle comes out. And it's going to speed up, especially scaling on top with that shuriken. I'm playing three attacks every turn guaranteed. I'm actually going to take care of you first, because I don't want to deal with dazes. And we are not super concerned about the blocking at this point. So let's see. Strike on you. Let's do another flex. Bash, cleave, and you're dead. I took no damage. Ah, heart of iron. I always like a little bit of extra help blocking. Like I said, there are those turns once in a while where you will be taking some pretty hefty damage. 
So having some potions in the back pocket that help out with blocking or healing, I think can be very beneficial on a run like this. Ooh, extra rage for more block. We're not at all worried about your thorns. Very nice. We're up to seven strength when we get our flex off, which obviously we have every turn in a five card deck. Eight strength, very, very quickly scaling. So you can see how even a simple deck without any rares can be very, very effective. Attack potion, kind of meh. Yeah, we don't want that. I don't think we're gonna go for any more elites. We don't need any relics to really make us any stronger now. We have everything we need just within the cards and the relics we already have. So, we basically just want to shoot for events and quick hallway combats. The elites are just going to be dangerous. They give us a chance to make mistakes and lose health. That may cause a little trouble with Time Eater. This is not a guaranteed win right now as of yet. Time Eater is still tough. And you have to be very mindful of the card counting mechanic. Which is going to be a little strange with us because we've got this five card rotation, sometimes six, with Ink Bottle. So we need to consider when to play or not play very carefully. Alright. Now, generally, you would say that if you go to a campfire where you cannot heal and you cannot upgrade a card, that that is a waste of a campfire. However, this is not a normal circumstance. And what this is, is a very fast floor. You don't have to make a decision, you don't have to think. It's not going to hurt you in any way, so you can just click through. And again, if you're doing something like the Speed Climber Achievement, then that is a very good thing to have. You don't need to add anything more here, you just need to get out. So. Quick floor, very easy. Frozen egg doesn't do anything for us, but oh well. Lose a strike here is okay. Because right here, I'm gonna take this twin strike. That's gonna be very, very nice to have when we are playing against Time Eater. It's only one card play, but it'll hit twice and give you a little boost. Make sure he dies a little faster. So, Rage, Flex. Let's do you, because you're attacking for the most. You're blocking. Getting blocked, not blocking. My bad. Flex. Cleave. Oh. Bash, Twin Strike. It's okay. Almost messed it up there. Transient again. Haven't we taught you this lesson enough, old man? <laughs> Sorry for the snork. You can see here with our scaling on Shuriken, with our very efficient deck, even though it's made with only commons and one uncommon. Very, very efficient. And does more than enough damage against tr Transient all by itself. I don't think we need any potions here for this fight. We're doing 80 damage per turn, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like 88 or so. So, this final turn, we don't need to worry. All right, transient's done. Don't need this fairy in a bottle. I think the potions we have are quite good. Do 
do you. Let's see if we can kill you first. You're the most annoying. Oh, one short. Are you kidding me? Alright, taking a little bit of damage, but... I think we'll be okay. Okay, upgrade Twin Strike, and here we go, Time Eater. Show us what you got. Let's play this Heart of Iron right away. No, heal us basically to full. And give us a little block to start off with. All right. Full blocking right away. Now this turn, let's see, Rage, Flex. Let's do another Rage. And let's do... Ooh, this is tough. I would like to end on nine cards. So I'm not gonna play these two. I'm gonna give me, myself, some cards to play next turn so I can be better able to block this next attack. That's something you gotta be really careful of. Weak potion would be nice here. I don't think we saw one though, did we? Rage, flex, bash, cleave. I think we might use this blood potion after this one. Yeah, this seems like a good blood potion time. Same thing. Rage. Flex. And we've got three plays that'll leave us on nine for next turn, which is good. Bash. Cleave. Print strike. Six. Oh, down to two, but we'll get it back up. Okay. Flex. Cleave. Twin strike. Let's go for this pot now. Let's do as much damage as we can on this turn while we got lots of attacks. And we're starting at zero on this timer, so we don't have to fret or, you know, be too cautious and careful. 27 times two, that's great. All right. Full blocking even. I think we are on our way. Next turn, maybe, is a kill. Uh, let's see. Let's just go flex. Twin strike. Not quite a kill, but we survived the 45 damage. 48 damage. And now you're dead, I think. Yeah, definitely dead. 27 minutes, not a speed climber win, but wasn't necessarily going for it. Just throwing that out there. And there it is. If I didn't already have the achievement, it would be right there. Well, thanks for sticking around and watching all the way to the end. I hope that was informative and gave you guys some ideas about how you can get this achievement on your own. Don't worry too much about the cards. There are a lot of five card minimalist decks that are possible. Go on Reddit, go online, search for decks other people have made. Use that for your own inspiration. Go into the run with a plan. Say, I want to do a dropkick infinite on Ironclad. I want to do, you know, the basic rush down, feel no evil, tantrum infinite on Watcher. Know the cards you're looking for. If you don't get them pretty quickly, if you get through the first act and you're not seeing the cards, if you're not getting good events, good removes, then call it. Don't waste your time on a seed where you're halfway through act two and you still have 12 cards it's probably not going to happen 
I would say at the very latest, I would say Act 2 boss is the last stopping point for me. That's the last chance to get something like Empty Cage or Pandora's Box or Astrolabe. So if you're right on the edge, if a couple more removes, one or two are what you need, you might hold out hope for an Empty Cage from the Act 2 boss. But certainly if you don't get it by then, if you're going into Act 3 and you're still struggling to get multiple removes, you may just want to call it early and then try a new seed because it probably won't happen. Other than that, keep an eye out for good Niao bonuses. Go to those shops. Don't spend too much money. Head up those early Act 1 events especially. There are a lot of removes and transforms that can be very helpful. And just plow away. You got to be very disciplined. Don't take something that doesn't fit exactly what you want it to do. Just take the exact pieces you need. Don't be worried about whether or not you can survive. Play on A1, play on A0, and especially on Ironclad, rely on the starting relic to heal you up if you do run into trouble. That's it for me. Please leave a like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll see you next week with another installment in the How To Minimalist series.